Welcome to the ADSET webinar on inclusive classrooms. Firstly, I'd like to pay respect to the traditional and original custodians of the land where I am today, the Palawa people, and pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging. And I would also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal community who will continue to maintain their identity, culture and Aboriginal rights. I'm Darlene McLennan and I'm the manager of the Australian Disability Clearing House on Education and Training. Adset. We excited to bring you this webinar on the accessibility of Windows 10 and Office 365. Our presenter Troy Weller is a learning delivery specialist from Microsoft. I had the pleasure of attending um, a workshop with Troy um, last year and I found the tips and tools he showcased was highly valuable. I hope you do, do um, also enjoy the presentation. Just a few of the housekeepings. Um, we, to activate your closed caption, you need to click on the um, CC button or closed caption button on the toolbar that is located either on the top or bottom of your screen. To increase the number of the lines appearing in this caption box, you need to click on the small arrow on the top right hand side of the caption box. If you have any technical difficulties, you're um, welcome to email us at admin at adset.edu.au That's admin at adset.edu.au Troy's going to talk to us for around 50 or so minutes and then we'll have 10 um, minutes for questions at the end. At, throughout the presentation, please feel free to enter your questions into the chat pod. Um, you have the option to share your questions and comments with the entire audience and you can do this by selecting all panellists and attendees. That's why you can chat to each other or answer um, each other. Um, at the end of the um, Troy's presentation, I'll ask the questions. So now over to you, Troy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much. I'll just turn on my video, at least for, for part of today. Um, yeah, my name is Troy. I am the um, uh, learning delivery and accessibility specialist for Microsoft. Um, I tend to play mostly in the southern states, um, being Tasmania, Victoria and South Australia, a little bit in WA. Um, but my other role, which is um, accessibility, tends to take me sort of more national. Um, so yeah, so keep an eye out for face-to-face um, -face events as they come up. Um, now, I originally called this uh, workshop the Inclusive Classroom, um, but then when I found out it was going to be aimed at, you know, more sort of university level, um, maybe higher secondary, even people in the workforce, I thought I'd just sort of rename it a little bit being Accessibility in Office 365 or Windows 10. I very much do play in the education space though, um, so I don't think I'm going to be quite able to get away from um, uh, showing you how this could be used in, in your classroom, um, you know, whether you're a lecturer or a teacher or whatever. Um, but I, I hope a lot of it's going to be adaptable for you um, nevertheless. So um, I'm just going to uh, skip ahead now and just show you, um, this is how you connect with me. Um, so I'm available on LinkedIn, I'm also available on um, uh, Twitter and I'm available on Facebook as well and AdSet will certainly make these slides available to you so don't feel you need to jot any of that down. Um, but it's just, if, if you're on any of these platforms, it's a nice way to stay in touch with me because what I tend to do is I do a lot of the heavy lifting and the legwork for finding out about the latest accessibility features within the Microsoft platform um, and you know, sometimes there's updates and things just slip through slip through to the catcher, to the keeper and we, you know, we tend to miss them. Um, and so what I do is I, I I dig in, I find what's going on, and then I just publish those onto my um, Twitter feed, my LinkedIn feed, and Facebook feed. So it's just a nice way for you to stay in touch without having to do all the work. Um, this is a, an a oldie but a goodie. I know that um, probably most of you in this um, in this space have certainly seen this um, cartoon before. Um, when I go around, I'm you know often presenting to teachers, principals, um, etc. And I like to really highlight the difference between equality and equity. Um, it's funny looking at this um, because I've always looked at it and seen that little boy. Um, for, for those of you that, that, that can't see it, there's, a, um, uh, there's three people standing on blocks, on wooden blocks, watching a baseball game. There's a, a taller man, a medium-sized boy, and a short little boy. And the short little boy can't see the, um, the game because the fence is too high. It's blocking his way, but they're each on a box. And then in the, the next frame, we see that the, the taller man has given up his box 
um, to the little boy and now the little boy is standing on two boxes and can see. And that's the difference between equality where everyone has a box and equity where you know someone gives up their box you know for everybody else. And it was interesting that when I was looking at this, I've always looked at it and just seen the little boy on the two. Um, and I know you're probably going to think, gosh, you know, the big part of the messaging is the fact that the man has actually given up his box, um, which is pretty cool. I guess the thing for us though at Microsoft is that our tools are for everyone and um, nobody needs miss out, um, you know, so that, so that others can have a more equitable experience. It's actually more about um, switching on subscriptions and, and, you know, seeing that this stuff is, is made available and, and native to, um, to our tools. So um, what you can see now is uh, a picture of Sachin Adela. He's our CEO. Um, and since he came into the organisation, he's really moved um, Microsoft, the Microsoft culture to really strongly value equity, inclusion. Um, he's put a huge emphasis on inclusive design in, in terms of Microsoft's um, tools and features, etc. Um, but the organisation as a whole has some great inclusive hiring practices and um, making our um, workplaces more equitable and inclusive places. But for you as, a, as an end user for something like Microsoft Tools, you can see there that our mission statement now is that we want to empower every person and every organisation. And we've hi highlighted there every person um, because we want um, every person to be able to achieve more. And um, I guess, you know, it's hard for you as, a, as someone who's outside the organisation to see that it's, it's legitimate and it's, um, it's genuine. Um, but as someone who's inside the organisation, I'm quite proud of the way that we uh, have moved into this space. So um, we're looking here at um, this slide showing how Microsoft has positioned itself in, in some different areas right across, um, right across what we do in the, in the accessible space. Um, we're going to really focus, I guess, sort of on learning today. There's definitely some stuff in, in the visual and hearing as well, um, and also in neurodiversity. Um, but as I said, I, I play a lot in the education space, so I really wanted to show you the, the way that these things could be used to um, support students, perhaps that you're teaching, or even yourself, um, if, if you're needing that little bit of extra help. So our inclusive classroom message um, is in these three areas. The one is, first is reading support. Um, so a lot of what we have helps people read. Um, and, you know, we look at something like reading support and we see, you know, from a teacher's perspective anyway, which is where I come from, you know, it's, it sounds very education focused, but actually helping people read in the workplace, right, or helping people read, um, you know, in their day-to-day -day lives as well. It's not just in the education space. Um, writing support as well. We have some, some great tools and great features to, to support you in your writing. And then the last one is communication um, with some of what we're doing in uh, the space to support people in um, EAL, um, uh, etc. But yeah, we'll go through and have a look at those and um, hopefully some of these will grab your, grab your attention. So talking about reading support, we have a tool um, that uh, won an award, or sorry, excuse me, won a competition that we have at Microsoft. So in 2015, um, Microsoft employees walked away from their, from their jobs for a, uh, a week or two and engaged in what's called Hackathon. Now that happens every year, but in 2015, a group of um, developers, programmers, um, people from other parts of the business um, decided that they were going to focus on uh, dyslexia. Um, and so they, they ended up winning the, the competition, you know, in spite of all the great ideas that came out through that, through that week or two. Um, and, and there's one, but it was so powerful and the potential was so much there that it's, it's now been added into the Microsoft stack of, of tools and resources and it's um, native to Office now. Um, so that's what we're going to spend most of our time on today. I'm going to take you through learning tools, um, also called Immersive Reader, and show you some of the the great things that, that it can do. Um, but, you know, depending on how we go for time, hopefully we can, we can go beyond that as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to jump out of my slideshow. Um, okay, so what we've got here is um, I'm going to show it to you in uh, OneNote. Um, but please know that this is available, what we're about to see, Learning Tools Immersive Reader, is available in, um, in Word Online in um, Outlook, in OneNote, and OneNote Online, and there's also a version in the desktop, um, desktop version of One, uh, sorry, excuse me, of Word. Um, but if you have a look at this piece of text here, um, you can 
pretty much see that for, in terms of its um, the size and the spacing and some of the language and bits and pieces, it's really quite a, um, a difficult piece of text to navigate. So what we did was we actually built this tool called Immersive Reader, which is the idea of this is to increase independence and decrease stigma. In other words, this isn't about necessarily someone sitting with um, a child or sitting with someone else and, and supporting them by using this technology. It's actually about the, uh, the, the, the end user using it by themselves. Um, so I don't know if you can see my screen. I've got over here this, this little button here, Immersive Reader, and that's the way it looks in OneNote. Um, and, and again, it's available for you in OneNote Online and Word Online, but we'll talk about how to access it later. Um, now, the first thing we notice when we push this Immersive Reader button, um, now, are you able to see that, Darlene? Yep, I am. Okay, because I seem to have lost my, my Zoom menu there. Um, but uh, the first thing we notice is it strips away all the distractions of the app. Um, so are you seeing a white screen with black text, Darlene? Yep. Oh, great. Okay. So it strips away the, all the distractions of the app. It's thrown us onto a white background. Um, so all those buttons, all those colours, all the, all the text, etc., has been has been pulled away um, from, from the text that we're trying to work with. Um, and the cool thing about Immersive Reader is that when we set this up on our machine, regardless of the tool that we're in, uh, whether in Word or whether in Outlook, etc., it will remember these, these settings for us, which is nice. Um, so that means no matter what the original text looks like, it's always going to look like how you want it to look and how you've set it to look when you click on the Immersive Reader button. Um, now you can see here I've got three icons. I've got text preferences, I've got grammar options, and I've got reading preferences. And then down here, I've got a uh, play button, and I've also got voice settings as well. Okay, so what I normally do when I work with teachers is I elicit from them the strategies that they would use uh, with kids. Um, but if we're talking about this in maybe a, an older context, um, instead I might, I might, you know, think about what you would do or ask you to think about what you would do if you came upon a piece of text that you're struggling with. And what we find is that um, people will often come up with the, um, uh, the same solutions that we built into this tool. So when I click on text preferences, first thing I can do is I can increase and decrease the size of the text, okay, according to what is um, relevant to me. Um, so in this case, I'm going to pop it to about there. Um, I can also increase the spacing, okay. Now for something like dyslexia, increasing the text size and increasing the spacing is crucial, um, but of course those solutions there are going to extend beyond dyslexia. But you can see there that when I click on the uh, increase or decrease spacing, um, I get spacing between the letters, between the words, and also between the lines. Okay, and that can be accentuated even more by increasing the text size. Okay, um, we've got three fonts. We've got Calibri, Sitka, and Comic Sans. We put Comic Sans in there mainly because it, it mirrors handwriting, and that just gives it a bit of a, um, a reach into sort of more mainstream. Um, learning environments, but for most people they're going to want a plain font with good spacing between the letters um, and, as I said, between the words and the lines. You've also got your ability to, to change your themes, okay, so depending on the light or um, uh, depending on what's going to be better for your eyes, etc. I know that dark mode is, is the absolute latest fad. Everything's, um, you know, giving us dark mode, so you've got dark mode built in, you've got sepia, you've got the ability to throw it on colours, etc. Whatever's going to be better for your eyes. Um, but where it gets really cool is when we click the play button. All right, apologies. I'm going to see if we can get it working here. All right. I'm afraid that the reason why this is not working is because we're coming through um, we're coming through Zoom, um, and obviously there's some sort of compatibility issue there. Nevertheless, um, what happens there is that this um, will actually read to us um, in an Australian accent. Okay, so we'll read word at a time: the Pacific, the Pacific Northwest, tree, octopus, etc. Um, even getting things like here: octopus, paraboxylus, um, sorry, paxoboral. I can't even say that. 
Paxobolus. Um, it'll even read those, those scientific technical terms for us, which is really good. Um, and it'll read us in an Aussie accent. We can increase and decrease the, um, the voice speed. Um, and you'll find that people, you know, if you yourself use a screen reader, you would know that you actually like it probably to be quite fast um, because you're wanting to process that in the same rate that other people read. Um, so yes, you can slow it down, but more importantly, you can speed it up. Um, the other thing that we can do is when we click on some of these words, um, instead of having the entire text read to us, um, when we click on a word, two things happen here. The first is we get a picture dictionary, which is actually going to prompt us. Okay, so we're looking at something here that in, in education we call scaffolding. So rather than doing all the work, it's just going to, um, as we saw in that in that picture, just give us that box to lift us up just a little bit as far as we actually need. So when we click on some of these words, as you see, we get the picture, but I can also listen to the word. All right, so if I click on something like west or something like north or even something like peninsula, Peninsula doesn't have a word there, but I click on habitat, there we go, we get the picture as well. Okay, so um, what we've seen there is we've seen the ability to increase and decrease the, sec the text size, the spacing, the font, etc. cetera, um, and then we're also getting the picture dictionary. Now, if we want to reduce um, distraction even further, we can throw in the line focus. Okay, so that way when it starts to play, it will move through um, line by line. Okay. The other thing too that's nice is, um, I'm just going to turn that line focus off. The other thing too that's nice is the ability to actually break it down into syllables. So when we're talking about people with dyslexia, for example, again, we're looking to um, give them that, that little nudge, um, but not necessarily do everything for them. Um, again, that scaffolding. So there you can see it's broken the word Pacific into syllables, which is going to help us decode. Um, and especially for children learning to read, um, not just children with dyslexia or learners, that's a, a, really good, um, a really good plus. Again, remembering that all these icons are here and not having to go out into the settings of Windows 10 or the settings of, of OneNote or the settings of my browser to, to change these. It's right there for me all in the, in the one location. Um, now you probably saw when I clicked over this before, we've also got a translate feature. Um, again, I'm really sorry about the sound not being there, which is, which is a real shame. Um, but when we're talking about EAL kids, um, so these are kids who either um, are fresh to the country or maybe have grown up in a house where English, uh, a language other than English is being spoken as the dominant language, um, sometimes those kids need that little bit of support too. So, um, and, and when I say kids, let's, sorry, I'll, I'll, again, I told you I was going to play in the education space, but definitely looking at um, EAL students in universities. Um, and TAFE colleges, for example. So when they get to a word that they may not know, um, they can click on it, still get the ability to see that picture and, and hear the word. However, they can also do a translate into their own language. So let's go down to something like um, Japanese, okay? And now when, I'm, when I click on my word, I still get the picture dictionary and I get to hear the word in English, now it's working, how's that? And then I also get to hear the word in Japanese. All right, or a word like the Pacific, and in Japanese. Yeah, we're still not getting the sound, we're still... Oh, you're not hearing the sound, well, I am at this end, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's reading it to, it, it to us in Japanese. Um, now, what we can do as well is we can actually translate that entire document into Japanese. All right, so for the students that need that really high level of support, they're able to, um, to hear that document read to them. In Japanese, um, you'll have to trust me, she's reading in Japanese. Um, so what we, what we have now though, is we're sort of living in an age where you're probably, you know, it's probably been a little while maybe since you've looked at a translator app, um, but the Microsoft Translator app has got a very high level of, um, uh, sorry, a very low level of error rate. Um, so it's actually a very good translation. I, when I walk around to schools and, and share this, um, drive around to schools and share this, they, they usually give me somewhere between um, a 70 to 100% accuracy. And that's anecdotally, so that's really quite high. Um, and we're also living in an age now where um, just last year was the first time that um, the AI, the translation AI, and it was a Microsoft AI, beat the human in um, the error rate from English to Mandarin and Mandarin to English. So we are living in an age now where um, the machines are doing a better job translating than the humans. 
Um, just turning that off for a moment, I do also want to show you the ability to highlight the parts of speech. So I can um, highlight my nouns and I can change the colours of these as well. Um, I can highlight the verbs, the adjectives, the adverbs, um, and then I can also show the labels um, for, for people that have problems uh, distinguishing colour. Now when we translate that into something like Japanese, you can see that um, the Japanese language, we still have the ability to um, differentiate the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives, etc. Um, it depends on the language as to what's, um, what's able to be done. So for example, if I was to go into something like Chinese, which is a bit of a favourite, you'll see that when I translate, I lose the parts of speech. But these are constantly being added to and constantly being updated. So it's just a matter of time before you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to see that. Okay, so that's, um, that's learning tools or uh, immersive reader um, and, and how that works in, um, uh, inside OneNote or working with a piece of text that, that you may be um, you may wanting to translate. Now, that's all well and good for computers, you may say. Okay, so sure, if we're, if we're inside a computer, um, we've got some text inside there, that's great, but what am I supposed to do with things that are outside um, outside my, my computer, all right? So in, in the real world, in the analog world. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a, um, a video um, of a tool called Office Lens. Office Lens is a, a, a free app that you can download from the App Store and the Play Store, and it uses what's called optical character recognition, which means that when it takes a photograph of text, it actually recognizes the text and, and reads it and builds that into the image. What Office Lens does is it's a, um, first of all, it's a whiteboard app in the sense that you can actually grab pictures of whiteboards. So if you're unable to keep up with um, what's going on in the, in the meeting or in a class, you can grab it. It will um, automatically adjust that for you. Um, and then it will keep a copy of that and you can drop it into OneNote, into Word, into PowerPoint, um, etc. And this all happens from your iPhone, your Android phone or your, your app, um, sorry, excuse me, your iPad or your, um, your PC. Um, what we've got there is the ability to take a photograph of text, we're talking about the OCR, um, optical uh, character recognition, um, and it will actually grab a photograph and then you can be typing immediately from that text um, into, um, in, into a, a, a document file. Now, what's great about this, and I'm just going to jump out of that and take you back to my... I'm just going to take you back and show you here. Now what we've done is we've taken a photograph with Office Lens, okay? And by taking that photograph with that tool, um, we're actually able to, if I was to click here on Immersive Reader, you can see I've already got my settings um, done, etc. And I've got now the ability to listen to that text um, and Yeah, the challenge is we're not hearing it for those um, who are screen reader users. It's just going through the um, the words. Yeah. Um, so what it's doing there is it's reading. So basically from a, a photograph of text, we're able to take a photograph and then we can have that full immersive reader um, experience from, from a photograph of text. Now what's great is that inside your PC, inside your iPad, Android phone and, um, and iPhone, is that immersive reader is now built into those tools as well. So whilst you can drop that, picture of that text into um, OneNote. Um, you can also have that immersive reader experience through the actual um, device that captured that image as well. So we're not having to wait around and move it between apps, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, so you can see there that basically um, uh, I'm, I'm not locked out of analog text anymore. I can be using my device, taking a photograph of that and having that full immersive reader experience, which is great. Um, okay, so I'm going to um, pop back into my presentation. Um, let me know that you guys can see that. Yep, all good. Great. So this quote here is a nice one because it basically shows that um, regardless of your skill level, um, Immersive Reader is able to improve your comprehension. So we're not just talking about um, people that are challenged um, by, by text although certainly it will support them. Um, but even for people that maybe are trying to access a text where the vocabulary is foreign to them, um, and I don't just mean a foreign language, I mean it's just in a, in a, in a different different world that they're, that they're used to, um, to mixing. 
Um, there may be um, a younger person trying to access a text that's aimed at you know at higher higher level readers, etc. Um, so it, it will improve uh, improve your your comprehension. Um, okay, Office Lens, we've gone through that. So again, I will um, let you know that Office Lens, as I said, is um, a, an app for your um, PC. So you can go to the Windows Store and download that. But it is available in the App Store for your Apple device and it's in the Play Store for your Google device. And because it syncs to your Office 365 account, um, you're able to drop those into, into different tools. Um, so you can take a photograph of text, you can drop it into OneNote, into Word, etc., and get that whole immersive reader experience. Okay, I think another thing that's really important for us to sort of um, note is the fact that this is native to Office and these tools are native to Office. Now it's not at this stage um, in every Office app, um, but that is certainly changing because it's constantly being rolled out to more and more um, applications and then the, the features inside those applications are, are, are increasing more and more so we're getting parity across devices and across platforms as well. But I think what's really important is to remember that these that uh, these tools are native to Office, which means that you can take these with you into the workforce. So whether you're graduating from school or graduating from university, you can still take these tools with you into the next phase of, of, of you know of your life because um, these are native to Office. And let's face it, Office is ubiquitous um, in the workforce, at university, in schools, etc. Okay, so where do we get this? Well, first of all, we get um, Immersive Reader through Office 365. Um, Office 365 is a subscription service. Um, however, I promise I'm not trying to sell you anything. Um, instead, I want to let you know that you will find that most schools, um, whether they're aware of it or not, do in fact have an Office 365 um, subscription for their students. So every one of your large um, de education departments, um, most of your universities, um, et cetera, have got this. Um, so it's just a matter of knocking on the right doors in your organisation and finding out do we have Office 365 and how do we access it. You can of course buy a subscription for Office 365 um, retail, so you know, you go into Harvey Norman or JB or Kmart, um, you can buy them there. But before you do that, really try to make sure that you've exhausted your organisation and you know find out whether it, um, whether it is or isn't available to you. Um, you've also got Office Online, so that's a free service for everybody. Um, so you get an online version of Word, of PowerPoint, Excel, um, Outlook, etc. Um, so in uh, Word and in um, OneNote Online, this is available to you and this is free for everybody. So that's accessible at office.com. So again, office.com. Um, but when you come to office.com, it's going to ask you to sign in. And if you try clicking on your work, um, uh, sorry, if you try clicking on the work or school button, use your work or school email address, you'll find out whether you've actually got Office 365. If you don't, you can set up a free Microsoft account very quickly and you'll have access to Office Online. The other thing, of course, is you can um, buy a subscription to um, uh, Office 2019, um, but we really want to make sure that you've got the connection between Office Online and uh, Office uh, 2019, so that's really going to be there in, in 365. Okay, I hope you don't feel that was too salesy because I am trying to let you know that for, for most of us, it's accessible and we don't have to pay a cent. When we look at something like um, Windows, uh, sorry, Edge, which is our browser, um, a lot of teachers come to me and they say, oh look, you know, Troy, that's that's all well and good, um, but what am I going to do about the internet? You know, most of my kids are doing their research through the internet, etc. So what we've done is we've built this into, and sorry Mac users, this is only built into Windows 10 at the moment, um, but this is um, what we call Edge, which is the new browser. So um, it's, it's a blue E, you can see it down here. Um, it's a darker blue E than Internet Explorer. Um, so I suggest that you have a play with your Windows machine um, and, and try and get that running. Um, if you're not seeing these features, it's probably because you haven't um, uh, updated to, to the more recent builds of Windows 10. So just make sure that you get in and do that. Um, so um, what I've done is, I've seen this little uh, reading view button up here. Um, that's what we're going to press in a moment. But what I've done is I've gone to the National Geographic for Kids uh, website because it's a good example. Um, have a look what happens when I scroll down into this article. There are graphics. What on some websites is going to be ads and links and there's just so much going on on this page that for some of the kids that I teach or for, for some of the people that maybe you work with or maybe even for yourself, there's just too much going on on that page to help us to focus. 
All right, there's just too many distractions. Um, so what we've done is we've got this little button up here called Reading View. <coughs> Excuse me. When I click on Reading View, the first thing that you notice, I'm just going to try and move that. The first thing that you notice is that it's already stripped away, again, a lot of the distractions. Um, now, I can maximize my screen if I want um, by clicking on this. And now it's actually removed a lot of the distractions of the app as well. Um, but look what happens when I scroll through slowly. You can see here, and I've set this earlier um, in terms of the, the way that I like it, um, but I can um, change my text size and I can change the theme as well. Um, over here in Learning Tools, I've got the ability to increase and decrease the text spacing, um, change the theme, etc. I can highlight my parts of speech, my syllables, um, and I can also have the line focus. So we've built that immersive reader experience inside um, Edge, which means that when students hit on um, a web page, instead of being locked out or distracted um, by a lot of these graphics and bits and pieces, they're actually able to have that experience. And I know you guys aren't going to be able to hear the read aloud, but right now that's reading to me in an Aussie accent. I can speed that up, I can slow it down, and I can also have uh, multiple accents as well. All right, so that's in Edge for Windows 10. Again, free, part of your Windows 10 experience. I'll just reduce that. Um, and I just click on that button and that brings me back to the original. Okay, so again, Edge, click on the Reading View button and that will, that will do that for you. I, I will like to um, point out to you that sometimes what happens with some websites is they don't want you to strip away their ads, so they have actually got software that will disable some of these features. So just keep that in mind. Um, but you'll find that most of the websites um, will, will access that for you. Okay, so I talked before about um, parity of tools and um, platforms, etc. Um, so we've got the Microsoft Learning Tools availability um, slide here, which shows all the different platforms and different tools and then the features that are available in that in, in those tools. So you can see that really OneNote is our is our hero um, in terms of um, learning tools and immersive reader, but it's certainly got a presence in some of these other tools as well. So we're going to make these slides available to you so that you'll know that, you know, why isn't this happening on my device? Because perhaps it's, you know, that device and that platform hasn't had all the features rolled out yet. But watch this space. Um, the other thing that we're doing, which is kind of exciting, is um, we've actually moved into um, virtual reality um, with, the, with the learning tool space. And you may ask, well, you know, what, why, why on earth would you want to put um, immersive reader and accessibility tools into VR? And that's because it's an absolute reduction of distraction. So what we're seeing is kids with ADD, ADHD, autism, um, uh, and also people with a visual impairment. So we've been working with senior citizens um, around, you know, people that could not read in, in years are all of a sudden on a virtual reality um, headset able to read things, the size, you know, a book, but it's the size of a, um, a billboard for them inside virtual reality. So we're calling that VR with purpose. Um, it's certainly being developed at the moment. Um, it is available now inside learning tools. You, you just hunt around and find the little button. It's down towards the bottom, the bottom right. Um, so you can use it. But in terms of it being feature rich, um, you need to just watch the space uh, before you know will be happening in um, in that space. So writing support with dictation, editor, and word prediction. Now I'm just looking at my time here. Um, we're coming to the end of our time, so I'm just going to quickly um, take you through dictation. Um, now, I realise um, you're probably going to be able to see that, which is good, um, but hearing is going to be a bit difficult. Um, so what I've done is I've just opened up Word, okay? Um, so this is just a regular old Word, although this has got the latest update, so I'm not in Word 2016. To see this happening, you need to be in um, the Word for Office 365 or Word for, for 2019, okay, for Office 2019. But you can see over here there's a little dictate button. Okay, now I can dictate in multiple languages. Um, if, well, one can dictate in multiple languages. I can dictate in maybe two. Um, and if I click here and then click on my dictate button, now I'm going to talk to my machine and see if this is going to come up for you. Full stop, new line. Um, I can see that it's working already, which is great. It would have been really terrible if it wasn't picking that up today. Full stop, new line. 
I like when I use dictate because it's fun, comma, it's exciting, comma, and it's really good exclamation point. Okay, now you're probably looking at that and thinking, oh, you know, what, what's happening? It's not working. Um, but it's just the AI. Again, we have to be connected to the internet and we have to give, um, give that a little bit of time to catch up depending on the speed of the network. Now, what's great about doing that in Word, can you see it's already giving me grammar support over here? If I was, um, it, it picked up the um, uh, usually it doesn't. It will often hear that and realise that that's not something that we want in there. But I'm actually teaching the, the AI by, by changing that text there now. Um, the more I use this, the more it gets to know my voice um, and also I get to know its limitations, etc. Um, what's cool about this though is the ability to um, add your own punctuation as you go. Um, when we look into something like Microsoft Translator, it auto does the, the punctuation, but you can see here that um, in Office, you need, you need to add your, um, your punctuation in yourself. I already use this. Um, people send me, you know, questions um, and I will actually speak to the questions. What's nice is that this is now built into Outlook. So that means we can listen to our emails and we can also dictate our emails um, back to people as well. So um, for those of you that are challenged by by text and challenged by keyboard, this is something that's now native to Office and built in. Is it going to replace some of your um, high capability screen readers and dictation software? Um, maybe not at this stage, maybe. It depends on what level of support you need. So I encourage you to go in and explore that, but it will certainly add to what you have. Um, and there's no reason why you can't be using multiple, multiple levels of support. Um, when we look at something like um, spell check, um, you can see here that um, over here, if you were dyslexic and you, you right clicked on a button and you get this drop down, um, these suggestions here are largely useless. What I've got um, over here, you can see um, these points here, I have difficulty perceiving the differences um, and determining which is correct. I'm burdened by too many choices and sometimes the unique um, spelling patterns, um, spelling error patterns are just not, um, not able to be accessed by me. Or, or decoded by me. So what we've done with editor inside Word, and this is now sitting in PowerPoint as well, and also in, in uh, Outlook, so it can work for your emails, is the ability to right click, no more like this, but instead now like this. That when I right click, I get a drop down of these words, okay, and underneath are synonyms, okay? But what's really cool, and I guess you guys aren't gonna be able to hear this, but I can click on read aloud, and then that will actually read not only the word, but it will also read the synonyms so that I can hear what it is that I'm looking for and I click the one that I'm looking for and on I go. So that's now part of editor. The other thing that we've built into editor is the overview pane. Um, so what we can do is now when I right click on a word that I'm struggling with, um, I, I can do it inside, um, inside the text, but that might be too, um, too text heavy, um, too... <laughs> Okay, just to point out that wasn't my phone. Um, uh, but what we can do now is we can um, bring that outside the text through editor, which what used to be called spell check. Um, and you can see what it's done is it's actually pulled the entire sentence out over here. Can you guys see my mouse? Um, it's actually pulled the entire sentence out and I can listen to that um, sentence. So I can listen to the error in its context. It will also pull down those suggestions and the synonyms and when I click on the button, I can also listen to those as well. All right, so I can also set it to, um, instead of moving linear through a text, I can actually set it to do my spelling first, then my grammar, then my things like formal uh, language and conciseness and things like that. Um, and some of those may not be relevant to you, so you can turn them off. But what's really nice about that is it can keep me focused by dealing first with my spelling, then with my grammar, etc., cetera, et cetera which is really nice. So um, if you're on one of the newer versions of Word, um, please jump in and have a look at that and uh, see if that's going to give you the support that you need. Um, I'll give you these um, slides again to uh, let you have a look at some of the feedback that we've got. Um, another thing that's now come into uh, Windows 10 is Word Prediction. So just like you use on some of your mobile devices, you can um, set this inside 
uh, Windows 10 by the settings and it works with the Aussie language. Um, down here in hardware keyboard, show text suggestions as I type. And then right across Windows 10, when you start to type, it will actually bring you a, a handful of suggestions, um, which for some people is going to be a game changer. So um, I'd recommend that you get in and have a bit of a play with that as well. Um, we're coming up on the last of our time. Um, what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to um, share a, a video with you. Now the good thing about this video is it is captioned. Um, so if you don't mind not having any sound, um, I'll make sure the captions are on. And I'd really like you to have a look at what Translator can do for the deaf and what it is already doing for the deaf. Um, and then um, beyond that we'll start to answer some questions. Um, sorry, Troy, just before you start, um, just for screen reader users, we will send a transcript of this to you. Where I lived, they believed that deaf people can't do anything, so it was very, very difficult. I came to RIT because of the communication access that's provided here. RIT has nine different colleges. And NTID, the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, is one of those nine colleges. We are the world's largest mainstream program for deaf and hard of hearing people. We have the world's largest interpreting services, as well as the captioning group. It's the largest, but we still cannot keep up with the growth and the need for access services. So we decided to use Microsoft Translator as an additional communication tool, which can help RIT on its journey to scale. Microsoft Translator uses AI to provide another really strong bridge for the gap that has been there so long. As a deaf person, I want the exact same information that my hearing friends have. Education is all about communication. So you have to level the communication field and then the learning occurs. Working with Microsoft Cognitive Services, it was a fantastic experience. They were so motivated to work with us. It's like we jumped into the future. Presentation Translator was easier than we thought it would be. You really just have to click it, and the software automatically reads the content and everything that you have within the PowerPoint system. The custom speech recognition is critical for capturing vocabulary words that wouldn't necessarily be conventional in everyday life. For example, the terminology that you would see in a biology class. Malleus, hammer, incus, anvil, stapes, stirrup. We were able to feed key words into the classroom models. So the system is, quote, learning as it goes, and the accuracy has improved tremendously. Students can pick any language that they choose to receive the information. If the professor has chosen English, which they speak, then I can choose whatever language I learn in best. Sometimes I would miss information before because either my mind would drift or I'd think something else for a minute. So now that I have my phone, I can see exactly what was said so I can continue with the classroom and keep up. And that's been a huge help to me. Students can use the app to initiate a conversation with others or they can join a conversation that's already taking place. Once I knew about the Microsoft Translator, I realized I can use that back at home during family dinners and then I also can use it for study groups with my friends. In the future I can also use it for my job because communication is very important for all of us and we just want to be together and not feel left out. Do you guys play any video games? I grew up as a deaf person. I know what those barriers feel like. So when I see communication happening, access happening, it's amazing. If everyone had the technology that we do here, I know that deaf people in other countries would be able to succeed and go to college. There are barriers to communication everywhere, but I think it's time we look at the barriers as opportunities, and then they can be broken down. Microsoft Translator has the ability to provide opportunities to reach out to everyone. Um, so you could see that what was happening there in that, in that video um, was that um, they, they still had um, signing um, and but this was an added support to that. Um, so we're, we're seeing these tools not as replacements for, for, for existing support but as, you know, as additions. 
So I'm looking at the time now, it's now 10 to, so I'm gonna stop, but I do encourage you to go through, you can see on my screen here, I do encourage you to go back in and have a look through my slides. There's some videos, there's some online courses um, for you to explore that. There's also the ability for you to um, hand, hand links onto your um, IT department at your school, your organization to help them to, to help you by deploying this, um, this software and bits and pieces for you. Um, so again, I wanna thank you for paying attention. I'm sorry about the um, tech issues we had there for the moment, but we seem to have gotten through it. And now I'd like to field some questions if I might. Great, thanks Troy. The joys of technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, and thank you everybody for bearing with my um, reading skills. Um, <laughs> very challenged in that moment. Um, if people have got some questions for Troy, please feel free to add them to the chat pod. Um, one of the things, Troy did have a lot of present, a lot um, more to, to share with us, but because of the limited time, if people just want to write in the chat pod, if they'd be interested to hear more from Troy in the future, we might be able to talk him into meeting with us again. Um, one of the questions, um, uh, are there any specific programs to develop working memory for those students with recall difficulties? Um, I, to be honest, I couldn't tell you that, um, that those programs exist. I, I, I'm sure they do, but certainly not, um, not in our suite. It's not something that we're focused on. Um, that being said, though, um, there are some great courses on education.microsoft.com. Um, some great accessibility and inclusivity courses which talked about um, utilising some of the tools to help um, students with things, um, so some of those um, cognitive challenges um, with um, executive function and things like that, that, that those courses are in there as well. Um, this is where I would suggest that you connect with other people in the Microsoft um, accessibility um, sphere. We have um, staff, um, of course, Microsoft staff that live in this space, but we also have a lot of people that utilise our tools. Um, so maybe connecting with those people would be a, a really good thing and find out how people are using that. It's just a little bit beyond my skill set to answer that one. Sorry. That's fine. Um, someone's just talked about that at their um, at the local primary school um, that people BYO their own device, mm -hmm. um, which are often typically Android and iPads. Will Edge be coming to Android, OS and iOS devices? Um, yeah, Edge already exists um, on iOS. However, the immersive reader uh, learning tools functions aren't there. Um, I would imagine that they that will come with in time. I'm not privy to to the developers and the roadmaps on on that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, just give it time. However, I will point out that learning tools is available in um, uh, iPad um, and iOS inside OneNote, and uh, of course through the browser um, through uh, Office Online. Okay. With the um, voice recognition, um, how good or how fast does it take to kind of recognise most voices? Is it is it like kind of the train the dragon or is it more um, that it just... Yeah, so it, it's very different software and it's an artificial intelligence. Um, so it's not that you need to train it in the sense that you do um, something like dragon, um, but um, you do need to, a better way of saying it is you do need to develop a relationship with the AI um, that the AI gets to know you and you get to know it. Um, so over a period of time, it will start to recognise your, your voice better than it did at the start of the relationship. Um, but there's no um, systematic um, procedure that you need to go through to train the device. Instead, you, you just start using it and it gets better. Okay. Why is um, Learning Tools only available in OneNote online version and not the OneLight application? Um, so, it, it is available in OneNote for Windows 10. Um, yep. It is available as a download for um, Office 2016. Um, but and, and as I said, it is available in the app for the you know the iPad, and it's also available for the Mac. So um, yeah, it, it it is available. Um, maybe you just need to update your your version of OneNote. Okay, it's yeah, it was a challenge. A few people that were online were saying, you know, that they're, they're still with Windows 2016 and so forth. Okay, um, so. Yeah, we're very fortunate. Like here at the University of Tasmania, we do have 365, and all students actually have you know a number of licenses for 365 that they can use themselves, and staff have access to a range of licenses for 365, which certainly makes it difficult. Um, so there's another question. It seems that the focus on dyslexia has been quite well covered. Will Microsoft choose another topic to focus on in the future? Yeah, I think so. I, I, 
Um, again, I'm, I'm sort of lower down the food chain. I'm not privy to, to some of the, the, the future direction. But that being said, I know that the culture of the organisation is very much um, about inclusivity, equity um, and accessibility. Um, so I, I, I truly believe watch this space, it's only going to grow. The, if you were to compare the accessibility features in something like Windows 8 um, compared to Windows 10, you'll see that you know the, the list is huge in Windows 10. So we're already seeing a huge growth in that. So yeah, definitely watch this space. Okay. Someone suggested, could we get the direct link for the accessibility tools that are available via the Microsoft resource? Oh no, oh, sorry. People were asking if the software could be made backwards compatible. Many private consumers have old versions of Microsoft Suite. It's probably um, the, the answer to that um, is, is kind of yes and no. They did actually um, made it backwards compatible for uh, OneNote 2016. Um, so you do need to download um, the, the add-in for that. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's pretty much looking forward, yeah. Excellent. Someone's asked for the direct link to the accessibility tools that are available via the Microsoft resource. Um, I've just done a quick search of the website and couldn't find it. Everything will be up on on ads at all. I think we're also sending out a newsletter which we'll put the direct link into, into that. Um, so it looks like um, uh, there's an overwhelming, we'd love to hear from you again, Troy. Okay, <laughs> so great. great. Um, so Actually, what we could do is we could think about um, maybe just sort of one, like we did, we, we pretty much exhausted learning tools, but maybe next time we could look at Translator or, or some of these other other features as well. Yeah. So someone's made a comment um, that they teach tax for um, tax law for a lot of students with English as a second language and that immersive reader is going to be a game changer for them, which yeah, is absolutely totally. fantastic. It was, yeah, quite you know, mind you've, got, you've got one in 20, sorry, 25%, one in four students in Australian universities are from a language background other than English. Yeah. So that's, that's a phenomenal number. Um, so yeah, definitely switching, switching students onto this tool um, can be a game changer for many of them. Yep. Um, so I think that would be all. I'm just kind of, there's a few questions coming through, but what we'll do is um, if we haven't answered any, we'll send them through to Troy and add them to the, um, the link into the webinar, um, which would be great. Um, so thank you so much, Troy. Before we head off though, we do have um, two other webinars coming up um, in, the, in the future. Um, so next week we have a um, webinar on actually how to structure your uh, Microsoft Word documents um, in an accessible format, which we'll hear from Andrew Downing on that, which will be absolutely fantastic. So that's on Wednesday, the 26th of June. Um, actually, so that's not next week, the week after. And then we also have um, an AdSet webinar, Collaboration for Improved Career Development Decisions for Students with Mental Health Conditions, which will be on the first first of July. So I encourage you all to register for those if that's um, of interest to you. Um, yeah, so, and we've got quite a few more coming up in the future. So if you haven't signed up to the AdSet newsletter, you can do that on our website, which is adset.edu.au. Um, and um, you can hear about all our webinars there. Um, and we will talk to Troy after this about getting another um, time and if you want to shoot us for my, um, an email of what area in particular you would like us to focus on, um, we can put that towards Troy as well. So thank you everybody for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful day. I hope your weather there is a lot nicer than the Tassie raining day today. And, um, and thank you for bearing with us with all our technical issues. I think we've got it through. I'm looking very red and flushed, but I've survived. All right, take care all and have a great day.